Hey, y'all, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, presented by Ashley. And today, our episode is being recorded at The Graduate Nashville. It's an amazing hotel here off West End. Um, You can check out the rooftop. Also, their coffee shop in the lobby is amazing. It's so cute. It is so cute. When we were just out there, we noticed the the coffee shop had pencils. It was made made out of pencils. It's just the decor here is just absolutely amazing. It's so fun. But um, on today's episode, we had Taylin... Lawan. She is the wife of Taylor Lawan, who is going into his ninth season as a tackle for the Tennessee Titans. Um, and she was incredible. Yeah, my one of my most favorite things to do is to learn about the wives and let people know they're not just their players' wives. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's so much more um, than just being a player's wife. And like for Taylor, for instance, um, her and Haley. Hubbard um, started feeding Nashville. Yeah. And she's a huge animal advocate. And so it's just, it was amazing to get to know her as a person. Yeah, I totally agree. So mm-hmm. we hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited for you to meet Abby. And I mean, now I've known you for seven years now. I was just thinking about the first time I met you at yeah. Fred's. Yes. And, yeah. And I was pregnant, I think, with my first. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. I remember Aww. that. Yeah. That's a while it. ago. I love it. Yeah. Now the girls. Now I got two of them. It's crazy. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about the girls. Yeah. Your amazing house, by the way. Oh. We, we drove by the <laughs> other day and. There were cars everywhere. John was like, he better be at practice. (laughs) (laughs) That was for the girl's birthday party. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. funny. And Taylor's in bed before my kids are. So tell John he'll be (laughs) at practice. Sometimes I'm like, I'm going to call somebody and see if people are going to bed before their kids go down. Because I think you're just trying to get out of this. (laughs) Yeah. Trust me. We do now. I mean, John, it's night, 830, 9 o'clock. He's like, can we go lay down? (laughs) I'm like, the kids are still awake. We can't. I mean, so. Yeah. He's yeah. not the only one. Okay, well, good. I'm not going to tell him that. I'm going to say it's just him. Like, he's still yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Well, since I don't know you or your background or anything, yeah. can we kind of just start at the beginning? Like, where yeah. you're from, how you ended up in Nashville and all that? Yeah, so I'm from Canada. I'm okay. from a small town called Lake Country or Kelowna in British Columbia. And I was living in Florida for a little bit. And then I got scouted for modeling. I was around 17 or 18 at the time. I was like, Okay, like maybe this is like something I'm supposed to be doing and I wasn't really doing anything else with my life. So I was like, I'll just see where this goes. And it brought me to Nashville because I kind of had like L.A. or New York. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like a really like small fish in a big sea. And Nashville was like still the same networking. But like I felt like it was more like a small town feel, which was more close to home for me. So I came out here (laughs) and then um, I lived out here for about a year. And then I met my husband. I was about to go sign my contract. And then he followed me to L.A. What? Yeah, proposed to me in five weeks. <gasps> I know, we got to hear three about months. All this. Wait a second. <laughs> There's like so many details we needed <laughs> yes. from this story. <laughs> that was in Florida when I got scouted. Okay. And I got down my modeling kind of trail. I ended up in Nashville, I think I was 20. Okay. So I think I was in Nashville at 20. And you met Taylor then when I you met, met 20? I met him once in passing because I met his mom first. And I met him and he was like, she was like, don't talk to my son. He'll fall in love with you. And I was like, okay, no problem. <laughs> right before I was about to move to LA, I got in one conversation with him. And then he followed me out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Oh, and proposed yeah. five weeks oh, later. Taylor wants something. He's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. That's and then crazy. how long after uh, did y'all get married? Three months. Three months. Yeah, so we got That's engaged crazy. three months from when we met. Yeah, we got married in April. Met in February, got married in April. I just met him, and I was like, I'm going to L.A. And he's like, I'm coming. <laughs> So oh are you my modeling gosh. Still? No, no, I didn't like it. Like I never liked, I didn't like the industry. I didn't like how mm. you were talked to. I didn't like the girls, like just their mindsets was all very, just not me. So I had a hard time in it. I felt very kind of alone in that. And I was like, this is not what I want in my life. Like I don't want yeah. this. Like it's got to lead into something else. Like there's a different calling I have to have. And so there's this guy named Josh Gates and he goes around the world, just like looking at different mysteries and stuff in the world. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I swear. So I wanted to go on all these expeditions. So I ended up going to South America and did a documentary on animal trafficking. And um, yeah, I did that in, in, so I met Taylor in February, we got married in April and I did it in 
August. So you were the host of that? Yeah. Of like a series? Yeah. I'll oh, tell you cool. what, be 29 years old and watch yourself at 21 and talk for, oh, <laughs> for wow. a whole couple hours. A little, I'm like, I can never tell anybody about this. <laughs> <laughs> no one can see that <laughs> but no I, I look at it too but it's just like I'm so proud of myself for doing that Absolutely. and um the documentary we p- put it down in South America first and it ended up like getting a law changed to protect Andean bears oh down wow. there yeah so um I came back and I was going to do another one about wolves in Yellowstone and then wind came along and surprised us and now oh. things took a little bit of a different direction and I remember being like I'll just take her she'll be what six weeks old I'll just strap her to me and we'll go to Yellowstone and it'll be fine and then at six <laughs> weeks old I'm like I'm not leaving my house <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like safe space <laughs> <laughs> like not happening so now that's kind of on the back burner and I'm just enjoying being a mom oh my gosh that's so cool and yeah. you're you're a really big advocate oh, for yeah. um animals and um in Nashville like yeah. everywhere how did you start with that love of animals so I think I've just always loved animals as a child and I think you know I think most children do mm-hmm. I just never grew out of it so then I think that I've always had a heart for things that don't have a voice or that people are animals that can't help themselves and I remember before I had my children they're like oh just wait because after you have kids you'll be just as passionate about kids I'm like no no animals is my calling yeah. and then you have kids and I'm like oh god like now I just want to help mm-hmm. every child in the yeah. world and it's so <laughs> true but I think it just comes from me I just have a heart to want I just want to help things that can't help themselves and yeah. I just feel like we have such a responsibility to like mm-hmm. take care of everything mm-hmm. instead of just like everyone and right. I, that kind of goes out into animals and I think with being in South America you start to realize how much even just like the little beetles there like affect the ecosystem that like affects us up here and so mm-hmm. like when I just started seeing all of that I'm like wow there's just so much mm-hmm. that we can do to help so then I just it's amazing and with that that's yeah. amazing yeah. so how many animals do you have oh we got 13 chickens three ducks one bunny three horses and three dogs you oh, just wow. got surprised with the horse. <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh, our, my third beautiful. horse. Beautiful. Oh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She is gorgeous. I, I cannot wait. She's staying in Arizona because that's where my husband is from. So you just go out there and ride. and I've got two here, and then I've got one in okay. Arizona, yeah. That's so cool. So what kind of riding do you do here? So it's English style, so I'm learning English. Um, it's just a harder way of riding, and I think it's just a good foundation to start on because the only horseback riding I actually have in my past is – um, bareback on some horse clinging on for dear life and hoping for the best of it just kind of <laughs> like a ranch horse you know what I mean like I've never done the true proper like yeah. training yeah so yeah. I'm starting now I'm, I'm actually doing it with my daughter so uh, like on Wednesday we'll both go and we'll both learn together yeah. like I want to start learning Italian so I'm going to do that with her too so I'm trying to like start this thing where like we learn things together and yeah. I feel like it'll help her stay with it and it'll keep me accountable too so That's yeah. so cool. Okay, so how old are your daughters? I got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Okay. Yeah. Two. Oh I got gosh. one that looks exactly like me and one mm-hmm. that looks exactly like Taylor. Do so they act like? like uh, they're both. Like, some. Wynn is more me. She's very, like, empathetic and, like, softer. And Willow is just... <laughs> <laughs> Willow is just a whole like Win makes me look like the best parent in the world. Yeah, Willow humbles me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna ask if you had that motherly like experience where you're like, I'm the best mom on oh, your first, and then on your sure. second, you're like, oh, never mind. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doesn't doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My first was that, and then my second was the easy one, and I was like, okay, yeah. I kind of understand now like why people want a ton of kids. <laughs> yes, exactly. I always say like, I mean, mm. I think I would go for one more, but like if they were all Willows, I yeah. couldn't. Yeah, that's hilarious. I couldn't. Yes. She's fun and she's sweet and she's hilarious, but she's so like determined strong, and yeah. strong and just wild. No yeah. fearless. Yeah. So <laughs> fearless. And I'm like, she's At I wish Taylor could hang scary. out with her every day because I'm like, this is your kid. <laughs> <laughs> you take her. <laughs> How's it been having him home all summer? It's been good. So I was in Canada for most of the summer for the first time in three years because of COVID. And so he came up with me for the first time. I mean, he hasn't really been able to spend time with my family up there. So it was really nice having him there. But then he left and came back down for, he was probably down here for about three weeks before Mm -hmm. I was. So we had a big kind of space away from each other. And now like having him back, it's been like, it's, it's been nice. It's been, it's good to miss him. Yeah. (laughs) He's so used to having him. How did you adjust being an NFL wife? It's a fun story, like how we met. But yeah. I went from like my maiden name is Taylor Gallagher, and I always like, try to like describe it as like I thought Taylor Gallagher and Taylor Lewan had to be two different people, mm-hmm. and so I had a bit of an identity crisis because mm-hmm. I went from like I was just working down here, and I was gonna go back home, and like my whole family, like I have a big family, and they're all there, and my plan was to always go back. I never imagined living or raising children away from them, yeah. and then so I become this wife, like in a whirlwind. I'm like, okay, I'm a wife now. I'm yeah. like, oh, now I'm a wife of somebody in the spotlight like what's that look like and, right. and all of a sudden I'm pregnant and I'm like oh my 
oh no, <laughs> like, what am I? You know what I mean? And I just had this huge, almost like crisis. And then, but then it's hard to have a crisis when you're like, wow, I should be so thankful mm-hmm. right. because like, look at all that I've been given in life. Like I have this husband who loves me and this beautiful daughter and we have all this freedom mm-hmm. and like his job has just given us so much, but yet I'm freaking out. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who human. I am. You're yeah. human. Yeah. Yeah. You it's so hard. And then being, I was 22. You're right? young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like how do you process all of that? Yeah. It was just, it was like, it was really uh-huh. tough for me. And uh, Taylor's a really big personality. Yeah. And what comes with that is it's really high highs and really low lows because yeah. he is so in the center of attention. He puts himself there that when, if things go wrong, he's going to be the first person that's going to be torn apart for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, as much as he's this big like tough guy like he loves to be loved and I think that's why he has this personality that loves this attention so when things get low it was all also like holy like as mm-hmm. like yeah. as me I'm looking I'm like who, who like if these people said that to your face like you wouldn't care right you know what I mean but it's right. like trying to go through that whole process when we were both so young yeah it's like that was like I think one of the biggest things in the NFL world where I was like holy like what's happening you're taking yeah. care of him and your baby and yeah. trying to figure out who you are yeah and really still getting to know taylor too. oh my god it was yeah <laughs> i don't, <laughs> don't i don't want to go back trying. there i'm like i don't want to go back to that time in my life that was crazy oh my but yeah god. so i mean I, I knew that was like gonna be like one of the things we talk about is like being the NFL wife so I've been reflecting on it and I'm like what does it mean to be an NFL wife it's a hard place to complain mm-hmm. because how could you you know what I mean in, the, in all those aspects that you're given and the things you should be thankful for but it's hard you mm-hmm. know there's a lot of sacrifice that comes with it and yes. your time is not now like your times is when they retire like mm-hmm. you you live in a shadow for as long as they're in this and mm-hmm. knowing Taylor he'll probably go into movies or something so I'll hey, be in the shadow I'll I'm be like I'll be in the be shadow done. for the rest of my life <laughs> 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 But like it's it really is. It's not like when I see like um, Ryan Casey. I yeah. don't know if you've followed mm-hmm. with her. That's Darrell Casey's wife. She, he used mm-hmm. to play on the team and he retired. And I just messaged her because she's like come out with her own wine she's and she's amazing. just like won her first court case. And it's yeah. like you just wow. see her time is shining. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm like, well, that's a great example yeah. of like an NFL wife's life. Like you grind through it and you get yeah. through it because it's worth it. It's so worth it. You don't want to complain because especially when they're done, it's like. It's your turn. It's Mm -hmm. your season. You know what I mean? You get to kind of do whatever you want in life. Do you feel like the pressure as far as um, trying to live up to what people think you should be like? 100%. Because that, I'm not going to lie, that happens to me. Well, I'm really careful as to what part of me I think I put out there. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I'm okay with being judged on this part. But like, I don't want to be 100% vulnerably myself or put too many of like who I am out there for the judgment or if I, you know, maybe if I see it in the wrong way and it hits someone in the wrong way and then I'm like, oh, that represents Taylor. And it's like every time I go out with him, I'm like more conscious of what I look like. Uh I notice that where I'm like, oh, like – does, is this good enough? And he's like, yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. he's, like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, he's like, he's like, what do you mean? And I'm, but to yeah. me, I'm like, well, like I'm Taylor Lewan's wife. Like, right. what, like that has to be like, that's somebody, you know yeah. what I mean? And I think the way that I've channeled it is I really try to give back as much as I can because then I feel worthy of being yeah. where I'm at. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's almost like, I think everyone has a different way of coping with it. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, We've been given so much, like, Mm -hmm. as a wife, like, I get to stay home with my children and, like, live this beautiful life. How am I going to cope with almost this anxiousness of, like, the pressure? And I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll keep giving back. I'll keep trying to take care of the community that took care of us. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here without the city of Nashville. And so, like, I really take that seriously. And so I'm like, how can I help the city of Nashville? Because... I'm not going to just turn my back on now that we've made it somewhere in our own individual lives. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I don't want to forget about how we got here. And I Mm -hmm. think that's like kind of my way of saying thank you. And it releases some of that pressure from myself. Maybe I always think about that. And I think the, closer I get to 30 the more the pressure goes away it that's does good. I'll tell you whenever I was so I was 22 whenever I married John oh wow and that's the year that he started his career with the NFL and um, I felt that pressure and it wasn't until probably about 10 years later I think I was actually 29 when we moved to Boston he was always with the Patriots but until he got like he was the director of college scouting we had to move up there, and I remember being around the players' wives and getting very nervous, thinking yeah. that I had to look a certain way or I had to act a certain yeah. way. And it wasn't until – and honestly, even when we got this job, it was the same thing because yeah. now I'm like, oh, no. It finally got to the point of, oh, my gosh, I'm nearly 44 years old. 
Yeah. Just be myself. Just be myself. And one hundred percent. You know, if I want that glass of wine, who cares if maybe (laughs) put a pound or two on me? I don't care. Yeah, yeah. No. I want to be happy. Yeah. I think the more comfortable you get and stuff like that, you're also like, oh, people are so worried about themselves that they're not even paying attention to me the way I think they're paying attention to me. You know what I mean? Like it's like Mm -hmm. they're all in their own head, but in my for some reason, like I made up this whole story that like, oh, they're thinking this of me and this of me Mm -hmm. and that of me. And half the time they're worried about their own stuff. And Mm -hmm. they're not I'm I'm just a blip on the radar you know what I mean and that kind of helped free that up for myself yeah. as well but yeah well I remember coming into <laughs> the NFL wives I was like uh oh <laughs> like, this is that was the most nerve-wracking thing I yeah. think about becoming yeah. an NFL wife because yeah. I remember when I first came in there was like I don't know if you felt this but when I first came in there's like this hierarchy uh-huh and I was uh-huh. like oh I don't want to play this game yeah mm-hmm. good for you yeah, so, so I f- was by myself a lot like mm-hmm. I remember there were some years where like I'd be by myself and I'd turn around and there'd just be a whole row of wives. Um. And I was just like, ah, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I would just sit there. And then eventually as the years went on, like, then I got the invite. And I'm like, well, I don't want the invite. It's right. not something I want to earn. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. it's like I want to make true friendships or whatever it Good could be. And so, mm-hmm. like, I stayed strong in that. And it was lonely. And, like, yeah. I'm sure that some girls maybe thought I was being, like, Right, I don't right. want to sit with you, but it, wa- it was protection <laughs> yeah. for myself more than anything. You know what I mean? And yeah. now it's like I have some good girlfriends on the mm-hmm. team. I'm super kind of more, uh, more cordial. I know more of them now, actually, to be honest with yeah. you. But it's changed over time. But when I first got into it, it was like – Oh, I thought high school was over. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let me I tell know. you, it doesn't even stop in their forties. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't stop. It's hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's When's hard. five, and she's already dealing with mean girls. Isn't that mm. crazy? Yeah, she's like, I was going to say, this girl said that yeah. what I was wearing mm-hmm. wasn't nice. I'm like, what? I her name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where does she live? Yeah. Okay. What's her mom's name? Did you figure that out yet? Yeah. <laughs> so what what have you done to like support yourself? And do you have like daily practices or you know like hobbies? Or you obviously ride, but like my animals more than work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does give me keeps my feet on the ground. You know what I mean? When you're taking care of things and stuff like yeah. that all day, it kind of keeps your feet on the ground. But I was a yoga instructor before this. That's kind of oh, what nice. I did when I got out of school because I thought I was going to go into a trade more than spend all the money on doing something I don't know what I want to do uh-huh. one day. On Honestly, this is probably my first year, like I've been telling everybody, like this is my yes year Mm -hmm. because I felt like every time the season would hit, I found myself like just waiting for Taylor to get home to make sure like, hey, like, are you injured? Do you want me to run you a bath? Like I was just Mm -hmm. so doting and ready for him that I kind of lost my, my life. You know what I mean? And I felt like there was no reason for it. Cause like mm-hmm. he even said, he's like, oh, he's like, well, I'm not, like well, yeah. what are you waiting for? Like, go do your own thing. And for some reason that wasn't something that clicked in me until like this past year. And I'm like, I'm going to start saying yes more. And it's like, cause eventually I'm like, man, I'm just getting miserable and I don't want to resent him one day because right. he never asked for that. Mm-hmm. But like, I just feel like, and you could probably relate I do with it. it. All the time. Yeah. You do it. I do yeah. it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just something. It's a hundred percent right. Like yeah. it's like you just, every minute you can get with him, you want to get, mm-hmm. But then I'm getting, I'm getting wore out. You know what I mean? Yeah. The whole, cause I just feel like I'm like, I'm just waiting. And then like things like little things, yeah. like we said before, when he's like, Oh, I'm going to go to bed at seven. And I'm like, yeah, you're, you're going like, to go to bed I'm at seven, here. go to bed at eight. And then you can spend an hour with me, but you know what I mean? But then it's like, right. he just wants to give everything he can to this career. Cause it's not forever. Mm-hmm. And he's closer to the end of the career more than the beginning of his career. You know what yeah. I mean? And he just came back from his injury. Yeah. And if you think that boy ain't going to be serious now, like, <laughs> holy That's gonna be a fun year. <laughs> oh, man. So it's like he's given everything he's got because in his mind, especially because he had an unfortunate events after he got his second deal, and now he's like, no, I'm earning this thing. Mm. Yeah. And the, a yeah. lot of it, all of it was out of his control. So now he's like so wants to make sure that That's he awesome. proves himself now you know right, what I mean like cause right. he, just because he couldn't before he's like no I'm here and like even last year like coming back from an injury I never knew what it took to come mm. back from an injury and that was one of the most mentally spiritually and physically exhausting roller coaster I've ever been on in my life let's talk about when he got that concussion where were you and <laughs> were you fr- I mean I know I was freaking out mm-hmm. I was like was, that when he was out for three minutes yes yeah <sighs> I was in our suite Mm -hmm. and you know, Will, he does his podcast with Will. So Will was with us and me and Will were standing like at the edge and I was looking around. I'm like, Oh, it looks like somebody's injured. And I always scan the field because only him and AJ Brown had red cleats on the offense. So mm-hmm. I'd always scan the cleats, and that's how I'd find Taylor because it's easy to tell the difference between yeah. them, one big human and one lesser <laughs> of a big human. So I would always look around, and I'm like, okay, there's AJ, and then oh, I see this group of people, and I just see two red cleats sticking oh, out. Shoot. And they weren't just sticking out. They were, like, limp. Like, yeah. they were like this. And yeah. so I was like, okay, like – 
<laughs> what's happening and so i'm um, looking at will i'm like what do you think's happening to him i'm like do you think like t- is he knocked out he looks like he's knocked out because his like his feet are limp and will's looking at me at first and he goes yeah they're, he's you know he's probably knocked out he'll probably wake up and blah blah and then like one minute goes by mm-hmm. and i'm like okay he's not moving he's not flinched a foot he's not yeah nothing's happened uh-uh. no one's letting anybody see anything i'm like well what's going on and now will won't look at me yeah and he's yeah. like uh, uh, they won't let him move because if it's a spinal injury or something like that he's not allowed moving i'm like okay Another minute goes by and I'm like, okay, well, if he's passed out and it's been three minutes, like, like I'm Googling, when does brain damage happen? Yeah. yeah. Like what is, is he dead? Is he paralyzed? Is he, and then minute three came by and oh. I am li- like, I'm shaking. I'm trying so hard. Cause I'm oh. with all these people. Were Some you people- with the girls? No. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that's Gosh. good. Yeah. No, it was a late game. Okay. Remember? So they were yes, sleeping. Yeah, it was right. a night game. That's so right. they were at home sleeping and, um, he got pulled off the stretcher and I could not look up. I was just like, Ugh. I'm thinking like. None of this was worth it. Mm-mm. Like, I was just like, we're fools. Well, how did we do this? Like, right. I'm just thinking, like, now my poor girl's like, I could cry thinking about it. And then he put his thumbs up. And then I'm like, okay, oh so God. he's coherent, but is he paralyzed? Because mm-hmm. that's still not, he's strapped. Like, yeah. he can't move. He just did this. And I'm, now I turn around once I saw the thumbs up, I'm waterworks. I, I mean, it. you see me, I'm not a very emotional person. Yeah. I don't really wear my emotions. I'm pretty content in life. And so all these people are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, how do we, some people don't want to look at me. Some people are surrounding me. And then um, Derek Henry and um, Kevin Byard's wife came in, maybe more. I don't know. I think Quentin Spain's girlfriend mm-hmm. happened to be in town, AK, mm-hmm. you know, AK? Yeah. She, I yeah. think she happened to be in town. There could have been more there. So if I forget, I'm sorry. But they come around and there were, I'm in this prayer circle and I'm just crying. Oh, just like, oh and I just want to be like, I'm so thankful for you guys. But if I don't get to him yeah. in the next right. two seconds, like you're going to, you're going to see a different side of me. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm about to climb over this edge. I'm climbing. I want to climb over seats and get to the Jeez. field. Like I'm about to be hollering mm-hmm. at Brabel. Like you get my down on this <laughs> field right now. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, if I was, I'm thankful I was in the suite. Cause if I wasn't in the suite, you would have been, I would have been security <laughs> escorted out of that stadium because I was getting on that field. Like, I'm like, I don't care about any yeah. of this anymore. Yeah. Like I'm getting to my husband yeah. and when it's so traumatic in these times, you don't remember yeah. every detail. No, absolutely not. So I'm coming down, I'm staring at the ground. I don't want to see fans. I don't want to see anything. I'm just staring at the ground because I've got the 77 jersey on. I don't, mm-hmm. I just don't want to see anything. So right. I'm just going down and I get down there and I walk in and he looks at me <gasps> and he just starts bawling his oh face off, gosh. apologizing. <laughs> apologizing? Yeah. Cause I've, he said the first thing he thought of when he woke up was my poor wife. Oh. That makes me cry when I said that. I'm starting <laughs> to cry. <laughs> you cry every episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I felt, yeah, he said, uh, he was super apologetic. And I said that, uh, um, thank you so much, but you're done. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, done I with looked, this. I'm like, you're never stepping on that field again. I looked at yeah. my balls like, thank you so much. But <laughs> we're done. I'm like, we're done. This is it. It's oh. over. I love you. You had a great career. Gosh. But, you know, let's go home now. Like, yeah. this is like, you're getting in my car and we're leaving. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I can say. And I remember um, Mitch the pastor was like, this is probably not the time. And I looked at, I looked at Mitch and I said, this is exactly the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was not to be You're like, this to is my up. life. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, I am on yeah. this one. So he was like, I'm okay. I promise. Like, it's like... And the doctor and everybody's talking to me. So we went and got a CT scan and everything came back surprisingly, mm. like, perfect. Like, Ugh. but, you know, you never know until. Right. It's you know so I mean? scary. It's so gosh. scary. Oh, my gosh. gosh. Oh, God. So, yeah, that that was, that's another tough part of it, being an yeah. NFL wife is, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing worse than that few seconds where you're like, oh, we're going to be that 1% mm-hmm. of the 1%, and this mm-hmm. is going to, mm-hmm. our lives are forever changed. Mm. I bet after yeah. that now. I mean, I'm sure before that you were always nervous during the game. I bet it's a whole I, new level. I can't look at him. Oh. Like, before I only used to watch him play. Like, I didn't know where the ball was. I didn't. I was just making sure he hit everyone. Yeah. So after we could talk about which play, and I was like, oh, did you yeah. see when you did that? And mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, you kind of missed a step here. And what was that all about? Like, we talk about it. Now I'm like, I don't know what you did. I'm yeah. not looking at you. Like, I cannot look at him. Mm-hmm. I have to stare at the ball. At every snap, I ask myself, is Tannehill going to throw it or run it? And that's, I, that's how I distract myself from looking at him. Like, I just mm-hmm. have to, I try to guess if he's going to throw it or run it. And yeah. then that's it. And I follow the ball. Like, I can't look at him. Oh my, oh my gosh. It's too That's much for so me. That's so scary. I had to tell you my most favorite Taylor story. They had a fight on the field, and I was like, first thing in my mind, where's Taylor? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Where's Taylor? Taylor? And then I look and Taylor's all the way on the other side of the field, yeah. sitting on the on the sitting on the field. Yeah. So that way he doesn't get he trouble. doesn't get up. <laughs> so Taylor had a year where he had so favorite. many penalties. Oh no! He was like, 
for Halloween, he dressed up like a yellow flag. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had that many penalties. And so we're at home. I'm like, you get one more penalty, and, like, I'm going to kill you. Like, just, like, stay out of it. You don't need to be involved in everything. And so he, when he did that, I'm like, you smart. <laughs> he, like, oh, sat on his hands. Yeah, he did. Like he a little sat there like this, and he was like, this so funny. there's a picture of it on, like, I see. That's so hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's amazing. Well, let's talk about Feeding Nashville. Okay, yeah. And that, tell the audience what it is and how you and it was Haley Hubbard yeah. that started, started it. it. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So there's this, like, group chat of women, and it's, like, wise or artists of just people around Nashville that just have a really empathetic heart to help. Mm-hmm. And we always get in there, and whether it's, like, their neighbor needs help or, like, we have some idea we want to start or someone's throwing an event of some sort. We all put in this group chat. And so Nashville got hit with a tornado and then like a month later got hit with COVID mm-hmm. and this community just got destroyed. Right. And so I went in the group chat and said, hey, I have an idea. And I was like, we have all these because this is such a you know, culinary experience in mm-hmm. Nashville. There's so many restaurants here. So I'm like, we've got a lot of restaurants of chefs and employees being furloughed. And a lot of people are going hungry because they had promising jobs and now they're gone without, mm-hmm. you know, being able to predict that. Mm-hmm. So I said, what if we raise money to pay chefs to create food to give to whoever wanted it? Like nothing to prove. I don't want to see no stamp or income or Mm -hmm. I don't just anybody who felt hungry can come get it. And then Haley side texts me and she goes, I'm in. Let's do it. Like, how Mm -hmm. can we do this? And then she took off. She found someone in San Francisco who's kind of doing the same thing. We went back and forth with them and they're a dream. They helped us like kind of figure out how they went about it. And then we kind of took some of that template and like made minor changes to make it work here. And then we took Ryan from Uh placemap. And he started running the kitchen because he does this, like, in-house catering. So, like, he brings a restaurant to you. So, like, if you want a dinner guest, like, he'll come and cook you a beautiful mm. meal, clean it, and go. And so he helped me find all these chefs and kind of run this kitchen out of Citizen's Kitchen. And then I think, like, as of, like, six months ago, I think we were at, like, 76,000 people we fed. That's and amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, like, it just kind of went on from there. And wow. now Ryan really heads the thing. Haley and I kind of passed the reins. Uh-huh. And we still help raise the donations. But, like, he's true. I mean, he's the heartbeat of the thing. It should have been his name on it from the beginning. Uh-huh. But, yeah, so he runs it pretty much full time. And he's kind of taken under place Matt's wing as their charity. And That's amazing. Yeah, they're, they're taking That's off. That's awesome. See, it, it, it's really hard to be an NFL wife. But it's things like this. Whenever you have a passion and whenever you take take your platform and use it for good yeah Mm -hmm. you know I mean with your animals with helping the homeless Mm -hmm. and it's just it's amazing and kudos to you oh thank you it it gives me self-purpose it separates me from like you know all football world Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. all that so it gives me just makes me feel like I'm doing yeah. something you you're something I mean? other mm-hmm. than 100%. taylor's wife even with doing like podcasts and stuff i think if you, if you would have asked me to come on here a year or two years ago i would have said no because it's something so nerve-wracking for me to come out and be on a platform when you're kind of like learning about yourself you know mm-hmm. what i mean like it's Absolutely. like i feel like you're especially in your 20s like you're just you're trying to figure yourself out mm-hmm. you know what right. i mean and it's like to put yourself out there in the midst of this like phase of your life of trying to educate and learn yourself and then you know if you take scrutiny on some level of that, it's like you're so vulnerable in that phase Mm -hmm. that like, if you're not sure about yourself, it's easy to get knocked on your butt. Uh And I think that going through that with Taylor and stuff like that, I was like, Oh, I got to figure out where my, where my shoes are. You know what I mean? And like, cause then I can be more sure of myself and then like come out on something like this and like be able to experience this Mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, have my feet in the ground. Well, I also think with having little kids, I mean, I have an 18 month old and a seven year old. Uh-huh. You're like, it's hard to even know, like right from left, like you're just changing diapers and feeding mm-hmm. people. Awesome. And you're like, why do you have to eat so much? And <laughs> I, like you have 400 <laughs> snacks a day and like, yeah. I can't. And so it's like, it's hard to even focus on yourself. Oh, yeah. Like it's impossible. And with you being a stay at home mom, like I can only imagine. So, yeah. You know, being here with no family or anything, mm-hmm. I was pretty much knee deep in kids 24 7 yeah but then we recently got uh, when I had my second we got a full-time nanny oh, and that's she nice. <laughs> I love her so much you have to you <laughs> have I to have people so that much. can yeah. yeah oh my gosh even just being able to be home and having an extra set of hands mm-hmm. you know what I mean where it's like and it takes the pressure off of when Taylor comes home and I'm like here mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you know what I mean like take him let me breathe you know yeah. what I mean because then he goes from his physical exertion all day long mm-hmm. and then it just frees us up to be able to even like sometimes That's he comes true. home and like I'll have the nanny come for when he's home mm-hmm. and we just go disappear and like I mean we'll do stupid things like play video games or mm-hmm. just like you know just yeah be just with each other Reconnect. you know what I mean yeah. yeah and it's just like it's just so important and I think really for a while is. I felt so guilty because I'm like I'm mm-hmm. a stay-at-home mom I should just be doing this all by do myself that. and then I'm yeah. like who d- who can no. do this by themselves? Single moms, that's going to be my next thing is I really want to focus on single moms and foster moms mm-hmm. because I just have 
the it's utmost true. respect mm-hmm. for how they do it because there's no way you don't lose yourself in it yeah no. you know what i mean like no. it's like and i just want to extend a hand because i think in our society we have really isolated moms to think that like you have to do it all by yourself mm-hmm. and then if you go into other cultures it's a community thing yeah mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. everyone's raising these kids it's That's not true. it's never just mom you right. know what I mean? in some in some communities after the mom has baby they're they're only allowed feeding them and that's it and the ba- they, everyone takes care of them gives her mud baths mm. wraps her in things for all this healing i'm like oh my god i know <laughs> <laughs> in the wrong place yeah. you know what i mean like it's like i feel like we've really lost the sense of community in our society like we i was talking about that yeah. like you know we used to know who our police officers were our teachers were Mm -hmm. all the above and now I don't know anybody I don't even know my neighbors and yeah you know being in this lifestyle I feel like you sometimes put walls up because you're like why do you want to be my friend why are you talking to me you know what I mean so I'm trying to find this like line of like Mm -hmm. how do you bring who can you trust yeah Yeah. and it's hard to ask for help as it is for females you know it's like we want to do it all and I think there was that culture for so long like if you're not perfect like you're failing or 100%. something and now I think there the walls are falling down where we're like I need help like yeah, I'm drowning I guess what we were never perfect <laughs> yeah like <laughs> I'm never gonna be perfect yeah. and get over here and drink a glass of wine with me before yeah. you know like I yeah. lose my mind <laughs> yeah I think a lot of people think that if you say like hey I'm not doing okay it's like oh I'm failing right yeah but it's like no I'm just not doing yeah. okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I don't think, I think everybody has those moments. Yeah. Have you found a good group of moms here that you can kind of have Yeah. That? Probably like, you know, they always say like the first group of friends you have in a new town will never be the friends you end up with, mm-hmm. which I like, I still am like close with them, but I like really reconnected in the last year with this mm-hmm. really awesome group of moms. And so like, we've really enjoyed it. My girls are getting, my girl when especially is getting true friendships now like yeah. she's got this one friend that I swear she would take a bullet for like I it is so it's I'm almost like it's like a, like she's addicted to her like <laughs> I need to see her 24 7 like I'm just like How, what yeah <laughs> and like she at school she was supposed to draw like the woman who inspires her and she drew her <laughs> oh my gosh that's hilarious <laughs> like okay <laughs> okay <laughs> so funny yeah, I like, yeah. guess I won't be offended <laughs> that's hilarious she brought home, oh who is this and she goes Olivia and I was like oh that's so sweet that's awesome that's so funny yeah you end up like having to have those friends too when your child is addicted to someone you're like okay I guess we're hanging out all the time exactly. <laughs> good thing I lo- like her mom yeah. and I are friends it's Haley's daughter okay. actually. oh yeah. nice yeah, yeah. yeah so luckily we get to hang out and they get to hang out. That's so it awesome. worked out in that that's way. That's great. So, yeah. That's so good. It's so neat because when we lived in Boston, it, I, that was because I'm from New Orleans. So I was really far away from home and I didn't have like family or whatever. And my girls were really young. And I still, to this day, the, that group of women are still my best friends. Mm, so there was special. five or six of us and we all came together because of our girls. And um, you just need that. Mm-hmm. You you need to depend on them yeah it's so important yeah Yeah. luckily all of my houses on my street are like this far apart like Mm -hmm. 10 feet whatever the legal code is and it's all kids and all moms that are amazing and so it's just like hey your kid's in my house now like (laughs) let me know when you want them home or whatever can can she eat mac and cheese (laughs) like we've got extra so (laughs) that's so special yeah when I was back home this summer I've had one of my best friends since we were like I don't know, 14. She's got a daughter and I've got two and she's pregnant with her second. But it was fun because like we got to do the things that are boring together. Like we'd go, if we had to go grocery shopping, we'd all go grocery shopping. If we, our yeah. kids were driving us nuts, we'd just all throw them into one pit together. You know what I mean? And it, like, even though our kids are driving us crazy and they're running up and down the aisles because they're feeding off each other like little animals, <laughs> um, we're just laughing. You yeah. know, and we're just with each other and it's like, gosh, this is so much more fun now that I have someone to do it with. You yeah. know totally. what I mean? And it's like, it's, it's, I think people forget how important friendships like that yeah. are, are and yeah. everyone always focuses on like their relationship with their yeah. spouse mm-hmm. but it's like they're, it's so enriching for your soul to have that friend that like yeah. if, even if it's one that like just shows up at your house or yeah. like if your kid if you're in a bind we'll come pick up your kids for you or yes. like you know what I mean like it's like that I feel like I missed out the most in the years that I was here and mm-hmm. I was so dedicated to being a wife and a mom yeah. and I was like something's missing like I'm not mm-hmm. I don't feel fulfilled and yeah. then all of a sudden I went and hung out with her I'm like oh that's what's this yeah. yeah totally. I know that's the one of the hardest things about not living in my hometown 
you never want to complain. You know what I mean? But like, it's true. Like you miss out on a lot. Like it's like even not being in your hometown, mm-hmm. especially if you like being in your hometown, you right. have like good roots there. You miss out on so much. Yes. Like it's like, I went back there and I'm looking around. I'm like, wow, everyone's gotten older. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even my grandparents, no one froze while I was gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that was the deal. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's like, you guys just wait and I'll come back. Yeah. And then, yeah. then you guys can live. But yeah. like, it's like they just lived all this life without you. And it's like, so there are these little sacrifices you have to make, but. Mm-hmm. I think to hear you that it goes on to uh, like your whole life. I'm like, Oh my God, I gotta get back home. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I do. I still, I still, I think about it. Y'all the most incredible thing happened yesterday. I was at one of the hotels here and my girlfriends and I walked up to the, the rooftop and all of a sudden I see this person from afar looking at me and I'm looking, I kept looking at him, and I'm like, how do I know that person? And I'm thinking, of course, I'm thinking Titan stuff. And, you know, I met him through John or whatever. And next thing I know, he's standing right next to me. And he goes, Jamie? And I was, yeah. Y'all, it was a friend of mine from back home. I I actually was friends with his brother. I actually dated his brother. (laughs) 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 And him and his wife were here working for the Grand Prix, like doing something with that. Oh, cool. It was the craziest thing. So they got to meet all my friends, and Aww. it was it was just I mean that yeah. that was the best thing of my night. And I'm yeah, like, I never see anybody from back home. Yeah. it just warmed my heart. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so special. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I grew up here, so I get that experience like oh, once a week. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, oh hey, you're a Costco member too. <laughs> How's life? <laughs> <laughs> do you have friends from like high school still today? I do. Yeah. 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 It is. It's fun. I mean, it's like, it can be overwhelming because you're kind of expected to keep up with so many relationships mm. and like, I want to, you mm-hmm. know, and then you have your new friends and then your kids' school moms mm-hmm. that you, it's like, you're kind of expected to be close with a lot of groups. And so yeah. it's kind of hard to manage, I but it's also is. awesome. I bet yeah. that is hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're so amazing. Oh. We've like love talking to you and yeah. Happy, what is this, Taylor's, how many seasons is he in now at the Titans? <laughs> Jamie, do you know how nine? This is our nine? seventh, and he was here before Yeah, us. I think 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Ninth yeah. season. Ninth That's season, crazy. Yeah. He, I have to say, one of my favorite stories about John, I have a bunch. Yes. <laughs> Tell us. And Taylor loves John. Just so you <laughs> know. So <laughs> Taylor <laughs> loves John. Like I think Taylor sometimes wishes that John wasn't his boss so he could hang out with John more. <laughs> like I really do I believe that. that. I really he tells me about him all the time and he always I describes him. He's like, yeah, he's got a chew and he's sitting back in his chair like this. Like he always <laughs> makes sure he gets into every detail talking about John. It's so funny. But when we were going through all this stuff with Taylor and I'm thinking like uh, oh the team's gonna turn, like they're not gonna believe him, blah blah, blah and all this stuff. And John made his way out to me like um, it's not like John and I talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> so John came up to me and he goes, hey, how are you? Like, Aww. how are you doing? Aww. And I'm like, I don't know how to feel. Like, I want to just take this all away from Taylor. And he goes, just so you know, like, we know you. Like, we know and we trust you. Aww. He goes, and I'm so sorry this is happening to you. And he's like, just so you know, like, we, we stand behind you. And yeah. I was like, how many That's teams would go out of their way? Like, how many GMs would go out of their way to make sure yeah. I knew that, that's like, awesome. you know, my husband was stood behind? Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think that's why Taylor literally wants to run through a brick wall for him. Oh. Mm-hmm. He really awesome. does. But I just remember, like, that always stuck with me. And I just was like, I've always, anytime people have asked about the Titans and the association and stuff, like, that's yeah. always a story I told. Oh, because I just awesome. felt like it just was such a big moment. He is so passionate for the players and for the team and for the grass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just yeah. anything to do with the Titans. He's extremely passionate well it's it's super easy to see I laugh at them because the other day we were at practice and my John was was talking and all of a sudden here here comes Taylor it's like the big old guy (laughs) smacks John (laughs) he messes with John so much I mean very well too though I feel like they're just all cut from the same cloth those they three are. they really are like yeah. getting them all in a room like Vrabel and Taylor <laughs> just remind me so much of each other it's not even funny like I feel like they're just like generations apart but they're like the same person yeah. and then John yeah. comes in and you can tell John has to be a little bit more serious but like yeah. you can tell that like he eats it up you know yeah. what I mean like he lets a little smirk out and then it's over Taylor if Taylor sees one little smirk it's game over now, now everything's okay I love it That's I love hilarious. it well, thank you so much for doing this of with course. us yeah I had so much fun